All right, guys, so here we go. We're going to tear down a B16 transmission to rebuild, um, go through some of the assemblies and show you what commonly is bad, what uh, you need to have, I definitely need to replace, and some things you just don't have to. So let's get to it. So I want you to zip off all those perimeter bolts. You're going to take these two. They have little washers underneath them, 12 millimeters. These are your detents. You don't want to lose a little spring and ball. Um, it doesn't matter if you mix them up or not. They're the same. Um, you don't have to keep track of them. So then you can see the, the detent ball and the spring, the bolt. Just keep them all together, put them in a safe place. here there's no difference then you got to pull this off half inch ratchet square drive get that loose there's a snap ring in there you'll need pull that plug off then around this side there's a 14 millimeter bolt here that has to come out that holds I believe the reverse shaft in place so you got to pull that out already broke it loose with the gun Pull it all the way out, set it aside. Take the snap ring pliers. Actually. All right, so we pulled all the perimeter bolts off, got the shift detent springs out, got the bolt for the, the 14 millimeter for the, the shaft inside. Now what we want to do is we want to pop these perimeter loose. You can pull the bolts out just to get them out of your way. Just set them aside. As far as I believe, they're all the same. You can't mix them up. Um, they're all the same length, so it doesn't matter where they go. Put those off somewhere where you're not going to lose them. Take the reverse light switch out. With the, with the 19 millimeter wrench, just pop that loose. Get that out of the way. It off. What you want to do now is, is get the seal on the case broken loose now that all the bolts are out. Take a little hammer, just hammer a little bit. There's a little spot on this side you can pry. Get that thing to pop loose once you get it started to be loose all the way around. Got the seal of Honda Bond broke. You can take your snap rings, snap ring inside pliers and Catch a little snap ring in here, it holds the bearing to the case. All right, so spread that little snap ring in there, get it to break loose. The shaft will drop down a little bit at that point. You should be able to take the case and it slides right off. And you can see everything, everything comes out um, and stays in that front case half. Um, the reason we pulled that 14 millimeter bolt out of here, it holds this reverse idler in place. So when it goes back together, this has to line up. You can reach through with a screwdriver and spin this a little bit if you need to. Um, it kind of splines in, so usually you don't have to. Um, you always want to make sure you, when you're doing these that you don't flip any of these over. Always that reverse idler, that big long shoulder always goes down. As well as anything else in here, you really need to keep track of what direction it came off so it can go right back on. So that's, that's definitely the thing. This little shim here. You can see it, a little black tang. That needs to be in the area it comes apart because there's a spot in the, in the right up in the case that it, that it hooks back into. Let's see if you can see it there, my finger is. So it hooks back into that. If it's off one way or the other, or spun the wrong direction, the case won't go down and seal and you will fight it and fight it and you won't know what's wrong with it. So that's something you really need to pay attention to on reassembly. Okay, so part of the inspection, you want to make sure nothing's broken, there's no little spring sticking out, nothing falling apart, everything looks good. This transmission is really clean. Um, I believe it was grinding into second and fifth. 
Um, some of the things you want to watch out for is looseness in these sliders. Um, on inspection, you can see the gold synchro rings here. If there isn't a, a, a space between the ring and the gear that it sits on, the synchro is worn out. There's an actual spec in the Honda book, which I'll look up and put at the end of the video so you can see what it is. But that if they're down against it, um, it definitely needs replaced. This transmission had a lot of miles on it, pretty hard use. Um, but these are all common things with the Honda 5-speed, whether it's a B-series or a D-series. Um, these are your wear points. Um, we won't be putting in uh, factory synchros. We're going to put in some Synchrotech synchros in this one. Um, and we're going to change fifth gear um, to an LS transmission fifth gear out of a B for a B18 just to give this thing a little more long legs going down the freeway and it still has the nice tight B16 ratios the first four gears so always the first gear up against the case that's first second third fourth fifth reverse is here is that little reverse gear ties into your one two slider and slides down and, and reverses the gear um, I don't usually uh, replace the any of the bearings unless they're noisy or making noise or, or feeling grindy and these ones really aren't I do always put an input seal and bearing in because that's the one that seems to take the most abuse and since you're this far in it you can't put it in without completely disassembling the transmission so always get an input bearing and seal if you're gonna go do anything in the tranny it's just for the $40 or $50 or whatever those seal and bearing cost it's not worth the effort to be this far in it and not put one in so we're going to zip off the, the reverse idler, pull this out of the way, and then we'll get these shafts out and get the shift forks out and start inspecting. All right, so we're going to pull off this reverse gear and its assembly, its mechanism. Just two 10 millimeter bolts. Those out. Pull that mechanism out. Pull the gear out the shaft, set those aside. Let's try to put the bolts back in where they go so you don't mix, mix them up with anything else inside the transmission. Set that aside. And then we'll pull the mechanism out for the shifting mechanism. Don't drop things on the floor. Luckily, didn't hurt it. Anyways. Pull the shift mechanism out so we can get the shift forks and get this whole assembly out and start taking apart those shafts. So again, just the 10 millimeter bolts. I can get down to them. Three of them on this. Pull that assembly, pull the bolts out. for one minute there is one real short bolt um, it goes in this corner there's the two bolts it goes in this corner here um, it's gold to show you that it's definite length the other two bolts are the same just put those back in no reason to take any of this mechanism apart um, unless it's broken or falling apart but don't need to get in that or mess with it at all so I never do Okay, now that we've got all that out of the way, we're ready to pull the shafts out. Shift forks, stay with the shafts as you pull them out. You just grab them as an assembly. Sometimes it doesn't want to come out. There it goes. So you grab it as an assembly. Everything comes out together. Shift forks, everything. We'll set it on the deal right here and turn the camera down so you can see it. So, pull the shift forks out, can't mix them up, they're all completely different, set them to the side, we're going to inspect those in a minute, um, and then we'll talk about the shafts so we can get a better idea here. So this is your input shaft. The only thing is, as far as your, this is your third and fourth, 
and fifth gear sliders and you can see by the looseness in that slider it's definitely got some issues it de you know um, as well as when I push down on the synchro ring there's literally no there's no um, space between it and that that you can hold it down against it and still spin the the gear easily so that synchro is completely worn out um, but we're going to go through this whole shaft as well as that one and replace all those brass synchro rings with upgraded uh, carbon fiber lined uh, rings from Synchrotech. So let's move on to a little bit of inspection. Let's come back. Okay, so now we're going to talk about the shift forks. The shift forks, a lot of issues. So we'll start. This is the fifth new shift fork. What happens with the shift forks is, is they get bent. So where they get bent is, is in this shaft here, this gets bent one way or the other, and it puts weird stress on that, that shifting ring and causes it to wear and be loose and grind into gear and prematurely wear that synchro out. So when you're, when you're doing your bang shift where you're not using your clutch and you're feeling like Ricky Racer, these are where these trannies just flat get damaged. And so a lot of the easy way to tell that they're bent is a lot of times you'll get a weird wear pattern on these, on these, these fingers, even though this one's not really showing it and looks pretty good. Um, you can kind of see it there where it's wearing a pattern in this because it's supposed to actually just ride on those. It shouldn't be touching any of this. So this one I know for a fact was bent because it was it was grinding in a fifth pretty bad. Um, so we definitely have some something to uh, change there. Um, the, this fifth gear shift fork is definitely going to get replaced. It even with the eye it looks like it's a little bit bent. And so that'll probably go in the, the replacement pile. So third and fourth one, these ones weren't really having a problem, even though I can see a little wear there. I know that this, cause this tranny came out of my personal car, that it wasn't really that big of a deal. So I'm probably going to just rerun this one. Um, I wasn't having any problems with it. So that's going to go in the, in the save pile. Now, first second, this is the one that takes all the beating, obviously, banging it first to second, tearing stuff up. You can kind of see this one, there's a little shiny there. It really shouldn't have anything. Um, the fingers have definitely got some wear on them. Um, this one's likely gonna get replaced also because this is the one that takes the hardest beating, obviously. You're in first and second more than anything else. And those wide open one, two shifts tend to be a little hard on them. So that's probably going in the replacement pile just to, you know, well, because I don't want to be back in this again. So we'll set these aside and we'll get into the shafts here real quick. All right, so at this point we just get the pair of screwdrivers out, get behind this outer bearing, work them in there a little bit and just pop it off. Make sure you get that in a race, slide it right off. No big deal. Put that aside, and we'll come back and start taking apart these shafts. All right, so like I talked about earlier, what you always want to do is no matter what, if you're going to have this thing apart, you want to put an input bearing in it and a seal behind it. Um, easiest way to get them out, they're not really pressed that hard in there, is you just take a screwdriver, since you're replacing the bearing, is you just catch the edge of the bearing with the screwdriver and take a hammer and just tap it out. They usually slide out pretty easy. And kind of move it around a little bit. See it sliding right out. Again, there we go. And there it is. We're throwing that input bearing in the garbage so we don't care that we're hitting it with a hammer. And then behind it is a seal. You gotta make sure that the lip, the, there's like a little recess in the back of the seal that that's facing you. So same same procedure, you just get in there with a hammer and hope you can catch the end of it. If not, sometimes you have to get in there this way. Again, we're replacing this, so we're not caring about that seal anymore. There you go, come right out, throwing that away. Again, you want this side against the case, this side facing you and the bearing when you put it back together. So. Just that, and you just tap it back in with a socket and a hammer. Um, the bearing will bottom out. It's not a big deal if you if you're really having to drive on this with a hammer. You either got the wrong bearing, or you got too cocked. So 
you don't want to do that and while you're doing when you do go to put it in obviously you don't want to lay the case flat um, I just stood it up for demonstration but you want to take it lay it flat find an appropriate size socket for the new seal drive it in face down like that and the bearing doesn't matter it goes either direction no big deal and so I'll set that up and show you all right, so what I like to do with these, just to make it easy and use gravity as my friend, is stand them up in a vise. So this is that main shaft. We popped the bearing loose on the bench a minute ago. Just put the bearing on there for demonstration purposes so you know it goes right there. So once you get the bearing off, I usually like to take them apart as assemblies. So I go down here to the fifth gear, and I grab it with my fingers, and I take the bearing and everything with it. There's actually a little bearing race that goes behind it, and you can just take it off as an entire assembly actually seems like it'll be easier just to take fourth gear right along with it so you can pull that off as a complete assembly just like that everything together easy to keep in order set it on the bench and then do the same with the next gear and then what you do is rebuild them as assemblies put new synchros in as you go that way it's not you can't get them really mixed messed up or mixed up because the main thing is you want to start flipping these things over when you start flipping these these deals over you start having problems um, with reassembly and you'll have you pulling your hair out trying to figure it out so we definitely don't want to do that um, same thing with this little tab here you want to make sure that you keep it all in the correct orientation the main thing with these transmissions is is if you get this stack incorrect when you go to put it back together it won't go or it'll grind gears or it won't come out of gear um, it be, creates a whole bunch of issues and problems so you want to avoid that as much as possible um, while I have this assembly in my hand I'll show you so what wears on these trannies and makes them grind not only is the bent shift for it, but this is your synchro ring. So as you can see, it's got little fine teeth inside, and there's a cone right here. Well, the cone, as you're shifting, shifting it, shifting this ring, it pushes up into this, pushing on that little spring, and what it does is it speeds this gear up to match the shaft. And so as that travels up, it locks across these teeth and these teeth, locking it to the to the shaft what's happening is when you're grinding is this is so worn out they can't match speeds and what happens is is those little teeth right there are actually grinding on the teeth that are on here that lock it in so that's the grinding noise you get also um, the way to tell when they're worn out is you can see that it's literally touching the gear there there's almost no space between them there's a spec in the book which I will put at the end of the video uh, to use a feeler gauge but in my experience I'm doing a bunch of these trannies if I know a gear is grinding I have gone through and done the inspection process before with the feeler gauge and found them in spec and still grinding so I always replace um, I've had really good luck just replacing the the ring um, instead of the gear when you buy these when you go to buy these synchros from the Honda dealer they only sell them to you as an assembly with the gear but you can buy aftermarket synchro assemblies like we did um, from Synchrotech. Um, I believe there's one other company out there that'll sell them to you. They're not super cheap, but they're a lot cheaper than buying the assembly because if you needed, say, this reverse and fifth gear, you have to get this whole assembly. And I think it's come somewhere in the neighborhood of 300 bucks from Honda where synchro rings might be 40 or 50. So again, this is things to think about when you're going to rebuild your grinding worn out b16 or you know uh, b18 any b series manual trans or even d series pretty much the same job uh, a couple little things different but very much the same so let's set this on the bench and we'll pull apart the next one so this one we'll just come here usually you'll have a little issue and this is where you get back at your screwdrivers um, maybe a little mallet to try to try to help drive this off because what's under here I'll show you if it'll come off is the collar that's locked to the shaft um, and so you have to put that you have to get that assembly out so you can replace this synchro ring as well and so here you'll have to again get some screwdrivers underneath it and kind of slide it off it's on there with a little press fit but it's not too bad um, let me set that up and we'll get that going 
Okay, so what I did here is just work screwdriver in between these two gears, pushing this hub up. And so at that point, once you get it to where you're going to move it up, you can grab the little bearing, keep it within it so you don't lose it, miss it up. Um, and you can just take off your 3 4 the rest of your 3 4 assembly um, and just set it aside. I always set it, like I said, face down from how it came off the shaft. So that way, you know, I pick it back up and I set it back down. So this is your input shaft, and this is as far apart as you can take it um, from this point. You start rebuilding those assemblies. Okay, so this is the three four assembly. Um, obviously, the smaller gear is third, fourth. The bigger the gear, the higher the gear. So, um, on this separate shaft over here that we haven't taken apart yet, the biggest gear that's first, second, third, fourth, and then fifth is sitting back there on the bench. So, just a little little easy thing to to help you remember when you're taking them apart and so to do the synchros it's not really that big of a deal you can put your finger inside and just keep the assemblies together and only take apart what you need to so at this point this car was having it there was no issues with third and fourth um, but since we're apart we're gonna go ahead and do it anyways and freshen it up so we take our synchro ring out um, make sure it's got that little snap ring on it you can kind of see it right there my fingernail right here um, I always order those new with the synchros just because um, always a good idea and so then I go over to my box of brand new synchros and just match it up real quick so I went over and matched up the gears um, I'm sorry the the synchros um, as you can see this one has the snap ring already on it for some reason it's on the package so we take our old one we make sure we set it far away to the side so we know we don't mix it up with our new one take this ring off um, try to get this out of the package. Make sure you get all the plastic off of it. You don't want to cause any problems. And so, I'll set that there. Put the trash to the side. Okay. So, there's a little, there's a, if you mix them up, there's actually an easy way to tell. So a new one, obviously this one looks new and that one's got some you can see like some some grime down in between those teeth but the easiest way is you take your finger here and these things usually they're sharp it literally will take a little little skin off you but the used ones aren't that way the new one is is definitely uh easy to tell with that so we take our little snap ring no real special orientation just slide it back down on there always like to give everything a good wipe down the new one on um, some of these have little splines that they have to line up with this one is not one of them you can see splines on the ring that have to line up with the splines here if you can see them when you go back together that has to spline up or, or fit but it, it it literally is you can do right right, right sitting here and so you literally can just take it and you see it fall into the splines and everything's nice smooth assembly again um, there's a bearing in here I'm holding in with my fingers because, again, I try not to take it apart anymore than I have to. So now, third gear has got its new synchro. Fourth gear, just pick it up, hold the bearing in with my thumb, put it to the side. This is your fourth gear synchro. Go back over to our box parts, match it up. Get this one open up, take the spring off the side of the package for some reason. And take our new ring. Slide it down over the assembly. Put that on there. And again, all we do is this one flips upside down because it's going the other direction. Set it and drop it in. Yep, see how it drops in spines like that. And literally, you can just take the gear just like that. I'm holding the bearing in with my thumb. Set it in. It doesn't have anything it really drops into. And that 3 4 assembly is literally ready to just reinstall back on that shaft. And literally that is what you do throughout the whole thing again along the way we're we're checking to make sure these aren't super loose sideways if there's a bunch of mo uh, movement in here you want to put a new one of these rings in or find a good used one um, because that also contributes to grinding and those those rings wearing out super fast but as you can even see here in the video there's a little bit i mean you can definitely see the the difference between the the synchro ring and the gear there's a nice gap in there now where there wasn't one before from them just being worn so it's a bunch, a bunch more of that um, on the other assemblies, and we'll set some of that up and try to film it for you.